time to coast the Veloster. I'm Ivan. And I'm Christine. This is DIY Detail. Now is finally the time for the eight year coating. But we're going to go one better than that. Uh, yes, tell us, Ivan. Eight year topped with three year. <laughs> Without further ado, off we go. The paint prep is done, the car is ready. It just needs coating. You know, I love the sound that the cap makes when it's coming off for the first time. <laughs> yeah. So I'm starting in the center here just to basically get it all spread on my, my applicator. Then I can box in the section. Filling it in in circular motions, getting it everywhere I need it to go. I'll just go a little past the half so it's easier for you to reach. Thank you. Now, the DIY coatings are all super easy to install. Basically, we put them on the surface and we look for, it looks like a rainbow or an oil slick on water. And when 50%, not of the polish, but of the coating is clear, now it's time to level. And leveling, we're using two towels. The first towel is a low nap towel. Then we follow through with a plush towel just to make sure we didn't get any high spots. There it is. So Christine, you've done a lot of coatings over the years. I have. What are your thoughts on the DIY coatings? Well, the moment I got my hands on them was the moment I changed the current coatings that I was applying, if that gives you any sort of indication. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I will elaborate for those who are not as familiar with the DIY ceramic coatings or for those who are not familiar with multiple different ceramic coatings. Um, I've, I've used a multiple uh, different kinds and brands and companies. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I dab around for what's, what's most uh, convenient or what, what, what best suits my needs in my shop. Right. When I made the change to, or when I had the opportunity to apply DIY, I was blown away first yeah. <laughs> by the ease of install. <laughs> it, it really is a super user-friendly ceramic coating, all of them. Uh, second, so just because it's easy to use doesn't mean necessarily that that is the coating that I am going to provide. It also has to perform well, and exactly. it has to look great on the car. Right. Which are... <laughs> Two things that uh, all three of the ceramic coatings by DIY do. Yeah, now we've chosen the eight year on this as the base and the three year as the topper. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is specifically because customers have asked, can I top the, uh, the eight year or the five year with the three year? And the question or the answer is yes, but you can't top the three year with the five or the eight. So. That's very important to note. The three year because of the graphene has to be the last one you put on. And the three year graphene as a, just a standalone ceramic coating, not as a topper, is a phenomenal coating. Yeah. The gloss and shine you get from that coating is amazing. It's one of my favorite, uh, one of my employees' favorite coatings to apply. Uh, he's even asked to if he could purchase them on our next or when I order them next because I'm ordering by the case now. Yeah. <laughs> if he can purchase some from me. Smart employee. Yes. So they are. Why I like them so much is because they are easy to apply for the do-it-yourselfers, but perform well enough to be a professional line ceramic coating. Yeah, definitely. We designed them as a professional coating first and foremost. And 
Having designed many professional coatings over the years, my whole goal was to make it easy to apply. But yes, so the coatings, we design them first and foremost to be easy to apply because we are aiming at the do-it-yourselfer. The person that's never applied a coating before can easily and successfully apply one of these coatings without any stress. Now you'll notice a bit of noise in the background. That's our air conditioner. Uh, that's actually going to help us apply the coating, so we'll leave it there. Because we have fairly high humidity in Omaha today, it's yeah. uh, <laughs> 95 degrees outside. So, and you can see it in your coat in the coating here. So it's it's um, flashing very quickly or curing quickly. So Ivan, we were discussing how easy this coating is to install. Yes. Talk to me, because it always is wonderful for me to hear. And for those who do not know, ceramic coatings do not have to be difficult to install. No, and even professional coatings. Uh, with today's technology, there's no need whatsoever to have a difficult to install coating. And some people are, let's say, uh, sold on the fact that, oh, if it's a professional coating, it has to be difficult to install. It has to be tough to do. It doesn't need to be tough to do in any way, shape, or form. And we're using leftovers on the, uh, the Veloster here, and my bottle is empty, so. <laughs> so we've been in the garage here uh, three weeks now, creating content for the channel, doing all sorts of fun, interesting vehicles. And the last one we're doing in this garage is the Veloster. I love that. I love that it's it's fitting that this is the last vehicle we're doing in this garage yeah. and that we're applying the DIY ceramic coating. Right. Now, this may not be the last video you see from the garage because they don't always come out chronologically. <laughs> That's fair and a great point to make. Yeah, but this is definitely the last vehicle in this garage. And when you're applying your coating, you want to overlap to the panel you're on or the previous panel and the panel you're going to. That way you're sure to have full coverage and make sure to get into and around and under the door handle. I was, that's the whole reason why I was gonna, I was asking you if you were on that door yet. I really enjoy ceramic coating the inside of a door handle. Yes. It just provides that extra uh, like aesthetic to the uh, to the vehicle, to the experience of the ceramic coating when you're going to get into the vehicle and it's very soft to the touch or slick. Yeah, definitely. The, you know, the tactile feel of the coating. Thank you, tactile. I used the complete wrong word. Not a problem. Yeah, you, you have that sensory experience, experience every yeah. time of touching the coating, feeling that slickness without yeah, having that, to touch the rest of your paint and scratching it up. <laughs> right, because, you know, generally it's very common. The first thing a uh, customer or if you are a do-it-yourself or and you're doing the vehicle or your friend's vehicle, the first thing they do after a good waxing or a good exterior detail or ceramic coating in our case, they love to touch the vehicle. Right. And the DIY coatings don't disappoint. They're very slick to the touch. The water beading is spectacular. They are very much a professional grade coating in every aspect. So. But easy to apply. Easy to apply and let's talk about how they can go straight from coating onto the road. Right, so if it's a nice sunny day outside, 
we can literally finish the coating and start driving. If it's raining, you have to wait an hour. And if it's snowing, you have to wait an hour. But if it's a nice day, go right ahead, start enjoying the drive. So here you can easily see the oil slick on water look. And as it starts to slowly evaporate away, I can take my leveling towel and level it off. Now, a visual cue if you're leveling too early is this. Move the towel across, I stop. And if I see the pattern of the towel, then I've wiped a little too early. So I can move on, do the rest of this panel, and then I'll come back to this area. Now I gave Christine the hard side because she has two doors. I only have one. <laughs> it's only fair considering this is the side that I use the majority of the time with a Veloster. Yeah, no, it's, it's not that difficult. They're the same length on both sides, just the passenger side has an additional door. <laughs> An interesting design feature of the Veloster. So let's try this again. And no towel mark, so I'm ready to wipe. You can also feel it in the towel. If it feels like you're moving liquid around, it feels sticky, then it's not time to level the coating. And don't forget to do headlights, taillights, trim trim, windows, everything on your vehicle is fair game for the coating. So once we've gone over it with the leveling towel, we go back over it with another high nap towel just to make sure we have all the coating wiped off and leveled. Speaking of towels, Ivan, that brings up another point as for why I enjoy DIY coatings over some others. Right. We are only using four towels total here. Right, and technically we only need to use two, but. Right, thank you, fair point. Uh, on some of the coatings that I have applied in the past, I need, oh goodness, at least a dozen. Yeah. And they're all going in the garbage when Absolutely. you're done. Absolutely. Whereas the applicator and the towel, we can easily just put them in our wash bucket, let them sit for 15, 20 minutes, and then we're good. You put, you launder them as you normally would. Yep, as Ivan mentioned, you're just gonna put them in your rinseless wash bucket. Oh, even your incredible suds, if that's, if that's the way you went on the original wash. Look at that. And the reason Christine mentioned the rinseless wash is, as a professional detailer, you really shouldn't be using soap. And in your shops, you don't use soap. Much more economic for me to use the rinseless. Yeah, the, the labor aspect of it is the big savings. Plus, it produces amazing results. Well, of course. <laughs> Happy customers pay the bills. And a happy boss makes a happy life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't think your employees would complain too much. <laughs> you don't seem like a crabby boss. <laughs> I try my best. <laughs> they were smiling every time I did so. <laughs> I paid him to do that, Ivan. Okay. <laughs> It was a little bit too much, so I just came back through with my applicator sponge and just like I was reapplying it. And I'm just spreading the coating out a little bit more. And I'm gonna go all the way down just, just so I know that it's completely even all the way through. And now I know that my applicator pad is loaded up with that extra, so I'm just gonna start on my next panel with that.
And it's amazing the immediate slickness we get. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited to see and feel what that three year is going to do on top of this. Yeah, it's uh, like I said, we're doing this out of viewer request. And also it's my own car, so I want to protect it. But the, uh, the three year and the five year and the eight year do a wonderful job of protecting by themselves. But adding the three year on top of the five or eight year, basically the major reason for that is additional water spot protection. And let's just say we're not very kind with our little Veloster. <laughs> Towing it behind a bus is not exactly the yeah. best place to live. She so. does see some things, Ivan. Yeah, so <laughs> if only the Veloster could talk. Uh, it would be calling me <laughs> the abuse line. But yeah. with the five-year, or in this case, the eight-year topped by the three-year, we're going to get the most of both. Uh, we're going to get the best of both worlds in the sense that you have exceptional protection and that little extra bit of water spot resistance that the three year provides. Now, if you're wanting to go for the ultimate in gloss, of course, the five year is the, the king of gloss. <coughs> but we decided to go with the eight year topped by the three. That still is going to give us phenomenal gloss but at the same time, really great protection. You know, everyone's needs are very different. Not everyone needs to have the water spot resistance. Not everyone needs the long-term durability of the eight year. And not everyone desires the highest of gloss. So that's why it's important if you have a shop or if you're just trying to get the best out of the coating for the person you're coating the vehicle for, is to ask questions. Yeah. See why they want a ceramic coating. If they're mentioning things like gloss, then the five-year may be your choice. Right. It all comes down to what does the customer want or what do you want as the, the do-it-yourselfer. And some do-it-yourselfers just love to play around and try different things. So that's why we're doing this, to give you sort of the, the how-to and the why-to. <laughs> I like that, the why-to. Yeah. Got to get that shark fin. Apparently, you get better radio reception if it has ceramic coating on it. Not sure, but, you know, <laughs> it's what I've heard. <laughs> It sounds right. Yeah, it's you know it's like the extra speed you get <laughs> from a clean car versus a, a dirty car. Clean car is always faster, always more, more fuel, fuel efficient. efficient. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Sounds better too. So I've uh, overstepped the center slightly, so you oh, don't have to you. reach quite as far. The Veloster is not exactly a tall car, but it's not short either. She's kind of rounded too, so yeah. it, I have to reach a bit. Right. I love these applicators, uh, foam pads, because I can get right in between a lot of these hard spots between the, uh, or excuse me, on the emblems. Did you start on the glass back here at all? Yeah, it's all done. Oh, it's all done. On this Perfect. side, yeah. Hands are getting slippery. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> the gloves with the coating on them definitely have a bit of a slide to them. So you notice I haven't added any coating to my applicator going onto the windshield simply because I know there's 
a little bit in there and on the windshield I can afford to put a bit of pressure on the applicator. So I'm squeezing every last drop of the coating out of the applicator. And I'm being careful not to put any on the, the moldings at the base of the windshield because they're already oxidized. The car is a 2016, so it's had a bit of life to it. And you never want to coat over a previously oxidized molding because even if you put a trim restorer on it, that trim restorer doesn't prevent the oxidation. It slows it down. So if you put a trim restorer on, it looks great. And you put a coating over top, it'll look even better. But as the plastic continues to oxidize underneath that trim restorer, the next time you go to apply trim restorer, you're gonna have a problem. Because the oxidation will be under the coating and you won't be able to get new trim restorer on the surface. So if your trim is already oxidized, you do not want to put ceramic coating on it. Resist the temptation. Because it is very tempting to do. All right. Let's see how far I can reach here. Can't the reach top. all. <laughs> you can't reach. I'll come over and get the rest. Wonderful. <laughs> coating with these, with the DIY ceramic coatings, really is an enjoyable process. <coughs> I used to dread putting on ceramic coatings, or you know, it just caused me anxiety because I knew what a difficult process it was. Exactly with the application and the strategic, um, like I had a small window when the flash time was, so I had to be very strategic. Yeah. And this is just really nice. Can you take a look over there? Yeah, you're, Did I make it far enough? Oh yeah, you're well. Uh, okay, perfect. You're well, well into where I coated. So. <laughs> but coating with these DIY ceramic coatings, I, uh, I love, I know I shouldn't love being in my shop after, <laughs> after hours, Right. but when I do have to coat a vehicle after hours and I don't have to answer phones and I, I don't have to uh, you know, uh, manage employees or the shop itself, I love putting on my headphones and just zenning out on ceramic coating a vehicle again. Did you do the whole wind, windshield or just the half? Oh, just one wiper. Though. I just did the half, and then we have the front, the rest of the bumper to do. Oh, I'll get, yes, that's right. I'll get that. Okay. And I brought our wash bucket back for that special reason. Now you'll notice I'm not doing the grill. The grill will be replaced shortly on the car, so we're not. Uh, not worried about coating the grill. It's seen a bit of abuse before us and uh, just don't like the look of, it, uh, of an abused grill. So we're going to replace it. Let's see if I have enough coating left on my sponge here. Might not even have to put any more on. If I can apply enough pressure. Yes. Perfect. When we're done with the applicator pads, very simple. Off they go into our wash bucket. They'll be back for another coating one day. <laughs> you know, your applicators, if you do not want to reuse them for a coating, they're great for applying tire dressings, oh, they're uh, very versatile. interior cleaning. There's a lot of uh, little things. Uh, your towels? Yes, I'm coming. Oh, they're over here. Uh, okay. I still have um, the windshield. The... Yeah, and the front bumper. So. Thank you. 
So Christine, you know, one of the other enjoyable parts of this, it's not hard to do. Oh no. <laughs> it doesn't feel like I've just had a workout. No. Some coatings I've used uh, actually recently and in the past <laughs> have been horrendous. Yes, they can be. <laughs> I've had less of a workout going to a gym than I did applying a coating, so. <laughs> they can definitely be arm days. Yeah. Using some of those coatings. So we're gonna walk around, we're gonna look for high spots just in case we miss something. I'm gonna grab a, a clean towel. These towels are gonna go into our wash bucket as well. That way we know that the ceramic is taken care of. We don't have any residue left on them. And then after that, they can be laundered and returned to service without wasting or throwing away a precious towel. Towels are not cheap, so. No. I'm, I enjoy be just being able to reuse the gosh darn applicator pads. Right. <laughs> the applicators aren't expensive, but it is a cost. No. Yeah. And I saw that I left a high spot here. I think you already got it. Well, look at that. Yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work, Ivan. Exactly. Speaking of which, we'll be teaming up this eight year with the three year. Stay tuned, we'll be back in a second. In the meantime, you can subscribe, hit the notification bell, and even give us a thumbs up. Back with the three year coating. We had a good supper while we were waiting. Now the three year coating, remember to stir, oh, mix it up. Thank you, thank you for the reminder. Yes, the graphene will settle. Slightly, yeah. Shake, shake, shake. So again, I'm starting getting the whole pad primed with the coating and it is super slick. <laughs> <laughs> so, skating around there? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> no resistance on the pad whatsoever. Ah, uh, yes, you can definitely see where you prime up on, uh, with a trigger. Yeah. It is very slippery. Yeah. It's like spreading oil on grease. Uh, <laughs> when 50% of that has gone to clear, then just like the other coatings, we can start leveling. And if I stop in the middle and I see the pattern of my towel, I know that it's still way too wet. So we brought the humidity down in here, had the air conditioner running for two hours. That helped a lot. So that also means that the coating is taking longer to set up, which is a good thing. So we can go on to the next panel and then come back to that original panel first. Making sure to overlap onto the next panel. And I'll even venture onto the door here. Oh, Ivan. Speeding up on me. So tell me why the Veloster and not something else when you traded in the Fiat? Yeah, uh, we need a vehicle that we can pull behind the bus. <laughs> That's manual transmission, fun to drive. Okay, all right. Did it come down to a couple different vehicles or? There's, there's not many choices. Not many, <laughs> there wasn't many choices. Uh, just about any four wheel drive, full size pickup truck could do. Jeeps, but we've had many Jeeps in the past and I'm not a, a big fan of Jeeps. They're good to look at, they're fun to drive once in a while, but as a daily, not exactly. And Sylvie and I both enjoy a small, sprightly car. little car. <laughs> sprightly, what a great adjective. Yeah, so the Fiat was actually very good, but. The, I enjoyed the Fiat. Yeah, the, the reason the Fiat had to leave was we occasionally have guests with us and I fit just fine. I know where you're going with that. Yeah, you were fine in the back seat, but that doesn't suit everyone. <laughs> Not everyone has your stature. <laughs> yeah, so we're a couple minutes in here. Very easy to level. Of course, being that it's on the other coating makes it super easy to level as well. 
and super easy to. It's a very, very slick. Yeah. Like I said, it's like applying grease or oil on grease. So it doesn't feel slimy, it's just super slick. I'll be honest with you, I have not done a topper yet. No, it will be extremely slick, first of all. Secondly, extremely hydrophobic. Because <laughs> the eight year by itself is very hydrophobic, and so is the three year. So. Because basically the eight years filling the pores of the paint, but it's still a little porous. The three year on top is just adding another layer in there, making it even less porous. So, now if we did accidentally leave a high spot behind with the eight year, the three year will be taking care of that for us. Hi, then we're spending way too much time together because that was. Literally the next statement that was coming out of my mouth. BB timing to is the everything. punch. Yeah, timing is everything. Like we mentioned earlier, this is the last vehicle being done in the garage. Then we're moving to a new location. Which is yet to be determined. So I can't get over how super slick this is. Yeah. It's a feeling as a coating installer you've probably never had before. <laughs> really wild. Now, if you're wanting to top your eight year or five year with a three year, there is a window of opportunity. And that window of opportunity is two hours to eight hours. After that, the base five or eight year has cured too much to the point that the three year just won't adhere to it. And if you try to do it before, the three year will reliquify, as a, if I could put it that way, the eight year, meaning you're not getting the protection you want or deserve from the eight year. So almost removing the yeah. body? Exactly. Well, replacing is a better term. Oh, that is a better term. Yeah. But yeah, that's the, that's the basic idea. So you have, an, like I said, a window of opportunity. So if you're wanting to do this, you know, leave, keep that timing in mind. It's very important. That's a, it's a generous window. Yeah. Two to eight hours is pretty generous. It's not like some coatings where it's 22 to 28 minutes <laughs> and you have to know the exact humidity and temperature and all that before determining whether it's 22 or 28 minutes so very true speak the truth Ivan and unfortunately I'm not joking those are real numbers from a real coating Now, those of you that are keen observers will notice we did a bit of paint correction on this, but we didn't go all out for 100% paint correction. First of all, it's unrealistic. We know how this car is going to get treated. So having perfect paint is not, not a requirement. We wanted shiny, glossy paint, but we want to keep as much paint as we can on the vehicle. A lot of times, perfect paint is not always what's the best. No. And, you know, when a consumer, uh, talking to the professional detailers here, when a consumer says, I want perfect paint, in their mind, perfect paint is what came out of the showroom when they bought the car. As detailers, we know that that's far from being perfect. <laughs> exactly. But for that, you know, the, the general consumer, that's what they consider perfect paint. And when you ask the customer what perfect paint looks like to them, uh, and they say, well, just like when it came out of the showroom, that should indicate to you as the detailer that 
They're not really looking for perfect paint. They just want shiny paint. And on, on the rare occasion where you do run into a customer or friend that you're detailing for that says, I want that no scratch mirror glass finish, you just explain to them that to do that on your, if it's a daily driven car, that I'm removing quite a bit of clear coat. And I, yes, I, you may be applying that ceramic coating, but you're still gonna wanna leave as much clear coat on your vehicle as humanly possible. Right. And a lot of times when you explain that to customers or friends, they're, they're gonna understand and, and Actually, thank you. Yes, and thank you, and, and elect to not have that mirror finish. Right. Uh, when a customer would ask me that, you know, say they wanted perfect paint, my response to them is, what kind of trailer are you picking the vehicle up in? <laughs> right. And it's like, what do you mean? Well, if you're wanting perfect paint, you're never going to want to drive this on the street again because every little thing will show. And manufacturers could provide us easily with paint that has zero orange peel. As a consumer, it would look great coming out of the showroom. The next day it would look all scratched. Yes. Because that orange peel actually serves a purpose. It does. As detailers, we don't want to admit it. <laughs> but it does. I've had vehicles with perfect paint that I wet sanded and polished and did all that too. And boy, did I regret it. <laughs> For those who do not know what orange peel is, orange peel, when you get up close to, I'm just going to say, you can get more technical once I've described this item. Yep. Which I'm sure you will. <laughs> it's that almost porous or cratered look to the paint when you get up very close. Right, it literally looks like the peel of an orange. Yep. So if you look at the peel of an apple, it's generally very flat and there's no texture to it. Whereas an orange or any citrus has that bubbly or, uh, bubbly might not be the best term, Crater. but cratered, yeah. So, and if you look at your vehicle, you're going to see that as well. And a lot of people never even notice it until a detailer points it out to them. <laughs> so don't give consumers your disease of seeing stuff that really doesn't Can never represent be reality. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so in this stretch of filming, we actually had our customer service representative, Amy here, and before coming here, she couldn't see these defects. <laughs> now she can. Yes, we've, we have officially infected her. Right, so we've given her our disease <laughs> as detailers. We are sure making short work of this. Yeah. Um, I think, are you done with this entire rear bumper? Or did you I'll, just do that? I'll now? continue on the bumper if you okay. wanna. Do, I'll do the roof. Yeah, and the front bumper hasn't been. Oh, the front bumper. Okay, well, I will move on to that. Okay. Periodically, I keep giving this bottle a shake to make sure the graphene is distributed through the entire coating. Yeah. The rear fender, you, uh, you did the whole thing to the back? I did. Excellent. Uh, yes. Yeah, the feeling of this, if you've never experienced this, <laughs> it's worth doing once. Uh, so it, it kind of is, just to experience the, the sensory of... Yeah, so if you have some three-year and some five-year or some eight-year uh, DIY coating, go ahead, and even if you just do it on one panel. Uh, that would be a great experiment, too. Yeah. So we talked about the Fiat. Those that have been watching our channel for some time remember that the Fiat was part of a big experiment where we took it through multiple car washes looking for the worst car wash possibly in town. And the coating survived that quite well. And that was our previous generation of coating. 
with this new generation of coding, it's even better. So we hadn't completed our testing at that point for that coding, for these coatings, so that's why we released the other one. And if you have a bottle of it, don't worry, it's still a great coating. And having a coating that can withstand those auto washes is really important. Because let's be honest, most daily drivers are still going to take their vehicle through the auto wash. Oh, yeah. And I love uh, being able to tell customers that this coating is going to stand up. I prefer you to not do that, but I understand, I understand that it, the convenience factor and these coatings can stand up to them. Yeah, exactly. The coating can take it. Um, and, you know, like you say, it's not something we suggest you do, but <laughs> if you accidentally happen to drive through a car wash by paying the entrance fee, <laughs> Uh, you know, nothing bad, nothing really bad will come of it. And car washes, to their credit, are always striving to be better. And as detailers, our mindset might be stuck in the 70s going, oh, there are these brushes just hitting on the car and destroying it. When in reality, the new car washes are using much higher technology, doing a much better job than they used to. And the coating itself can help prevent that damage, so. That's something that I always point out to my customers is, you know, it still is protecting your clear coat. Right. Now the damage that's being done is being done to the coating instead of your paint. Definitely. So you can never tell what time it is in the garage because there's no natural light. <laughs> I'm constantly asking, what time is it? What time, yeah. What time is it? <laughs> and right now it's, uh, you know, around eight o'clock at night. So can't wait to see this in the sun tomorrow. So much I'm excited. I'm excited to see how it takes on water tomorrow. Yeah. I'm excited to to see how slick to the touch it is tomorrow. I think we'll discover what the word hydrophobic actually means tomorrow. <laughs> I have uh, some friends that own a detail shop and they also offer a mobile service. And one of their mobile service customers was fanatic about having them come once a week and detail his car. And they're in an area that snows. Oh, okay. And in the winter, he didn't drive the vehicle. It was an, an exotic okay. sports car. And uh, he wanted them to coat it every week. To him, part of the detail was adding some ceramic coating. Oh, my. They continued to do so at the customer's request and eventually had to stop because the coating would beat up on itself. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah, and it was a uh, quite a, an amazing sight. I thought it they, was. Yeah, they described it as the water is jumping off the paint <laughs> before it hits it. It's, it's just reacting as soon as it comes out of the bottle. Yeah, the the water. You know, <laughs> when they were trying to wash the car, the water would just literally <laughs> look like it would get about an inch that from the paint and fall asleep. off. That's so funny. Do you want this on the windshield as well? Yes, please. Okay. Did you do the windows on the other side? I did not. Okay, yeah. When you get to doing the windows, you'll see just how slick it is. And this black trim on the side <laughs> is just, I've never seen it so glossy. <laughs> Even after polishing, it wasn't this glossy. Nice. So again, just making sure we don't have any high spots. I used the same gloves that I applied the, the um, five year. Eight year. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Thank you. So, so they're the, very slippery. Oh my, yes. I'm having a hard time holding anything. <laughs> yeah, the applicator sort of wants to jump out of your hand. <laughs> uh, I've only done this a couple times, and every time it amazes me 
<laughs> the level of slickness we get. So, so we resisted the temptation when we bought the Veloster to start detailing it right away because we wanted to do it on camera for all of you. And uh, it's been an amazing transformation. We washed it a couple times, uh, actually went to, to visit Chelsea from attention to details in Pennsylvania. We washed it with her and the, the transformation now is amazing. It looks great. It definitely looks like it's come a long way. <laughs> yes. It's not an optical illusion. I don't know how, if the camera is picking it up how glossy this is, but <laughs> very shiny. Yes, we can tell visually the difference between the the before and after with the eight year, and now the before and after with the three year on top. It's just a, a treat for the eyes. It is. It's really providing depth to your very multi-dimensional paint. Yes. So have the roof to do on that side. Perfect. If you want to inspect the other side for high spots. Well. I don't care how long you've been applying coatings, how many thousands of coatings you've applied, you're not immune to high spots. No. You should always be inspecting your vehicles after a detail. Yeah. No matter what service it is, even right. if it's just a, a wash, clay, and seal. Exactly. And I've always taught using circular motions for a reason. You get a lot less incidence of high spots. Because when you're going in this circular motion, your pressure is remaining the same and you're spreading the product a lot more evenly. Whereas if you're doing a back and forth motion like this, every time you stop, is a potential high spot. So every time you go back and forth and stop, you're actually putting a little pressure down and getting that potential high spot. So let me just do this here and you'll see exactly what I mean. I have gotten a flush microfiber, a nice clean one. Yep. Now I'm just gonna start running it over all of these panels. Mainly because it's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so slippery. So we can see here where I applied in a circular motion, the pattern is very even. But where I did the back and forth motion, in the center I have almost nothing, but on the edges is just one big high spot. So this is the reason why circular motions give you a much better and even coverage. And despite what some people will say, any coating can be applied this way. It is not limited to our coatings. It's just a basically a something that's stuck in the industry for I don't know what reason. We really like to follow the leader. Yeah. When it comes to detailing. That one person said it and then the next. And right. Then the next. Like the people that say, oh, don't do a circular motion, causes swirls. This paint has never been so clean. Even when it came from the factory, it wasn't this clean. So going in a circular motion is not going to cause swirls. And swirls, they look like swirls or circles because we see it with one point of light. If you have a line of light as opposed to a single point of light, now you can see that it's compromised of all straight lines. So there's just on the edge of this piece of glass, the slightest little high spot. And judging by how it's coming off with the three year, it was actually in the eight year. Now, one thing that can cause a high spot that a lot of people don't think of, and I'll ask Sylvie to come around here. She's holding the camera. We have a couple of little drops of water that came out of the shark fin. Maybe hard to see right there. Little drops of water that came out of the shark fin and that's what can cause the appearance of a high spot because that little moisture will cause 
instantaneous curing almost of the coating, giving you that high spot appearance. So when you're working around moldings, when you're working around different areas of the vehicle, be very careful that if you see a drop of water come out, to wipe that immediately. Grab another towel because you also don't want moisture on the towel. Put that, uh, the coating, uh, making sure there's no high spots, the high spot check. Yeah. Then I grab a nice, clean, flush microfiber because where I typically get high spots and I'm sure that I'm no different, is around seams or the tight body lines of the vehicle. And you really want a plush microfiber that will sneak in those areas and grab a hold of any high spot that's hiding. Yeah, high, and emblems are also a, yeah, a big... absolutely. For the same reason. Yeah. This is slick. <laughs> Slick is not the description. It's fun though, right? Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> Look. Yeah. Do you see that? Woo! Yeah, that's uh, pretty slick. <laughs> and probably even on the windshield. Oh, it's close. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah. And it's slick now. In probably two to three hours, it'll get even slicker. Remember, you have a one hour cure time before getting it wet, and you have seven days before washing it. Now, if you do happen to get a bird bomb on it, or you happen to take the life of a couple insects while going down the highway, wash those off. Uh, use a rinseless wash yes. or our waterless wash, and just spot treat that area. Mm -hmm. And be very gentle. You wanna blot them off instead of rubbing them off. Because what we're wanting with the coating when we're saying don't wash it for seven days, it's actually not the surfactants. It is a little bit of the surfactants, the first day or two. After that, it's pressure. Uh, we built up a certain layer of coating. It's not extremely thick, it's one, maybe one and a half microns at most, but we built up a little layer of coating. And it's the pressure that can scar the coating because we built a crust on that coating. So you're indenting the coating. Right, you're indenting the coating. And that's what's happening if you're trying to wash it. So that's why we say don't wash it for seven days. The first day or two, it's really for chemical resistance. The other, it's we want to let it cure all the way down into the paint because the coating doesn't necessarily sit on the paint. It becomes part of the paint. Yes. There are some coatings on the market that have a very high level of fluorination and that fluorination fractures. So oh, yes. when those coatings are too thick and they get moved around, they fracture. With us, we have the silicon nitride in here, which helps actually soften yeah. the coating and make it more flexible, reducing that fracturing. Yeah, so, and you, again, the like Ivan was saying, the coating isn't laying on a completely flat surface. It's filling in right. some of these very, very small nano, like crater or, or rollers. And, right. and when we fill that in with the coating, that is why we're also getting some of that gloss. Exactly. we're evening everything out. Right. Which coating does your car want? Drop it in the comments below. We'd like to know. So with that, thanks for joining us. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, and or ideas, don't forget to leave them below.